Simo Abbas is a journalist and political commentator joining us from London. We also have Jahangir Mohammed, who's the director at the Center for Muslim Affairs, joining us from Manchester. Okay, gentlemen, welcome. Simo Abbas. let me first start with you. Tell us what you think ended this dispute and why is this uh, being solved or resolved at this point in time? Well, of course, with the normalization that's going on with all of these uh, uh, Arab monarchies, uh, Israel has to be one of the factors in the background, I think, as ever. Uh, the Qataris, I think, when they were, ex if you like, extricated from this, uh, this uh, if you like, uh, gang of monarchists in the Middle East, were uh, it was a, a real surprise. The fact was that uh, all of the policies of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, etc., uh, coalesced really. They were all allies of the West. They were all financing terror groups across the Middle East, uh, Al Qaeda included. They were backing the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the Qataris certainly were. Uh, so it was a bit of a surprise that they all fell out at the time. And now I think one of the major factors is, of course, Israel and the Americans gathering together their little brood again. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, they don't, probably wouldn't want uh, Qatar falling into the, the hands of the resistance axis or, or, or buddying up too much with the Islamic Republic of Iran or the various other forces which stand against uh, uh, Western Zio imperialist uh, hegemony in that region. That's probably one of the major reasons that they have to all pull together again. I'm not sure how... Uh, how how deep that rift really was and whether we were just being played in the first place. But Turkey is a major backer uh, of, of uh, the, the, the regime in, in uh, Qatar. And it'll be interesting to see how they look upon this, this move because clearly they're, um, on the face of it, uh, opposition to the Saudis, etc., is also another factor. Of course, they're throwing allegations of uh, terrorism, which is why what they, the, 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 the Saudis, etc., and the Americans were accusing of the, uh, the, the Qataris of. But actually, it's a bit like the pot uh, calling the kettle black. The fact is, all of them were involved with funding and financing terror groups across the Middle East. They still are. And this is, for me, just a, a natural coalition of, of, of the damned uh, again. Well, John Mohammed, uh, Seymour Sen Abbas uh, talks about how um, it's going to be interesting to see how Turkey is going to react to this. But I'm also curious from you uh, how this would affect, uh, for example, um, Iran. We know Iran was uh, one of the countries, after the dispute broke out initially, that uh, came to the aid of Qatar, so to speak, in terms of... Uh, you name it, from products to airspace, etc. So uh, how will that uh, affect its relationship with Iran? Well, I think we have to have a, the correct uh, analysis first. Um, you know, a taxi driver in Dubai once told me uh, 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 words of wisdom. He said, brother, whenever you deal with these people, whatever policy decision they make, it is related to their money. And, and what we have here uh, is actually this is uh, really not about relationships uh, at this moment. It's like a temporary cessation of hostilities for one purpose alone. Uh, and most people haven't cottoned on to this. And that's that the Qataris are ho hosting a World Cup, Football World Cup, in November 2022. And they can't do that successfully without the uh, support of the region, uh, regional countries. The original plan was that uh, Qatar doesn't, they're expecting 1.2 million people to come into Qatar in two months during November 2022. And they can't host, a tiny country like Qatar cannot host that number of people in their hotels, in their accommodation. The plan was that these people would stay in Dubai uh, and uh, Bahrain in neighboring countries and then fly in uh, to the World Cup. Obviously the sanctions uh, and they were also partly about the, the uh, uh, wider economic political issues but also the resentment that Qatar actually obtained the World Cup and that these other countries didn't. And so that is uh, what happened. They sanctioned Qatar, uh, Qatar 
uh, and try to achieve their political objectives, distancing Qatar from Islamic movements and from Iran and Turkey. Uh, the Qataris resisted staunchly and uh, they have so far not given in. Um, I, I suppose the real question is, given that Qatar needs to do this uh, to make the Football World Cup a success, is what are the Qataris prepared to compromise in, in order to achieve uh, a deal which will allow them to successfully stage the World Cup and deal with all the issues uh, that, that occur. Uh, the signs are so far they haven't compromised that much. And in terms of Iran, obviously Saudi Arabia has uh, said to them that they, they want some movement on Iran and uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, Al Jazeera and, and Turkey. Uh, so far, the Qatari Amir has not uh, uh, moved in that direction. Uh, but uh, who knows what the economic pressures are on the tiny state and how they will respond. I don't think the Qataris will uh, drift away from their position, uh, having faced sanctions for three years and resisted. Um, but they will find collectively, I think, a solution to the immediate problem, which is the Football World Cup in November 2022. Okay, thank you for that. Jahangir Mohammed, Director at the Center for Muslim Affairs. And thank you, Sayyid Mohsen Abbas, journalist and political commentator. And that does it for the News Review. Thanks for tuning in.